So this is my day two of Advent in Code, um, and I've solved this already using uh, JavaScript, which is my kind of jam, I guess. Um, and now I'm going to uh, solve it using JQ. Um, and uh, I can actually do this in um, JQ term, which is a tool I wrote for kind of real time output of uh, JQ command. So this is the uh, source input. Um, and the rules for day one is um, to find the number of valid passwords based on the rule that A appears between one and three times. Um, and uh, here B must appear between one and three times, so this is invalid, and C must be appear between two and nine times. Uh, then you enter the pass, uh, the, the number. <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do, I've just pasted in plain text, um, and if I change this to uh, slurp raw, I can get a string as a single long string, um, and then I would normally split it by uh, new line characters. So that gives me uh, each line, basically. The thing to be wary of is that right at the end of this, always catches me out, is an empty string because at the bottom there is a blank line. Um, so I'm never sure whether to just remove that or what, but uh, if I had that blank line still, that end of line, uh, what I would do is just do uh, colon minus one, and that would give me a thousand records again, <clears throat> rather than a thousand and one. Um, but actually, I would break this into uh, def parse, um, and then put a semicolon there. And what I would do is oops, move that here, and let's just run parse. Um, and what I now want to do is split this, um, each of these strings. So I'm going to do map, um, split, and I'm going to split on the colon space. So now I have the password and uh, the rule string, and what I'm going to do is create an object that gives me um, the, we want, we want the password, which is um, dot zero. Nope. There we go. Okay, um, so I'm mapping my string through this split, and then the rule is going to be some kind of object. Uh, but what I want to do, or what I'm going to do, is pass in. Oh, it's not zero. It's one. Uh, pass in this into a new function called to rule, and if we do def to rule, just pass the string back out. So I'm going to do a similar kind of thing, but I'm just breaking up my code a little bit just to make it a bit more legible. Um, so the rule is split by space. And then what I've got is uh, letter is um, dot one. Cool. And then I've got um, min, which is actually dot zero split by dash um, and the min is the first one and then I'm going to turn it into a number and I'm just going to do the same thing for max max except it's one so now I've got a, a structured object that I can actually make use of so now I've got all of the rules parse I'm going to pass it into a test function actually now I'm going to do a map select test and test def test is going to return valid matches and the valid match will be something like um, dot password I'm going to break the password into um, individual words uh, individual letters and then I need to um, map each letter so that we test if it is equal to the rule. Um, and we've lost our context. The dot is the current object that I'm operating on. I've actually lost the kind of top level object. Um, so I need to store that before I drop into this. So I need to do dot as dollar underscore. Um, and this is just, this could be you know, record, whatever, I call it dollar underscore. Um, dollar underscore dot rule dot letter 
Um, and I'm going to pass that into debug just to see what's coming out. And it's broken triple equals, that's why. So we've got some debug coming out here. Um, it doesn't print all of it, but it's it's now only filtering by uh, the letters. And we need to count now. Um, so I need to not count. Yes, count. So I'm going to do length as dollar count. And now I'm going to do if dollar count is greater than or equal to dollar underscore rule dot min and dollar count is less than or equal to dollar underscore dot rule dot max then we are going to do true because this test function is going to turn true into this select basically a, a, a map select is the same as a as a filter in javascript um, else false and and we have a number up here so we can do this down here if we want. Length, 334, let's check. 334, cool, because I've answered this already using JavaScript. So 334 works, that's excellent. That is solution number one. So let's save that wherever my code is. Um, there we go, it's saved. And now we've got solution number two, which is, um, Part two, basically the rule, I mean, what the solution is about getting, writing the code so that you've got the solution. Um, the, the rule, the, the password policy was wrong. Uh, the password policy is actually that this letter appears at either the position one or position three, and it's not a, a, it's not a index zero. So, Position one is quite literally this position and it must not appear in position three. So this is considered valid. Uh, in this case where C appears in both position two and three uh, and nine, it's invalid. So um, the test function is what needs to change. So we don't need any of this. Uh, we wanna keep all, oops, we wanna keep all of the existing uh, rule logic. Um, and it's not the count that we want. So what we've got to do is break up the password. And I'm going to do uh, as dollar password. And um, what we're going to do here is find each of the letters that we want. Uh, each, we're going to take the, the letter at that position. So we're going to do um, dollar password, dollar underscore rule dot min, and we're going to grab rule.max, just have a look at the debug, just check we've got there. So we've got the letter, I'm guessing, whatever the first position is there. Um, let's go up to the top of that. So um, position four is an L and position five is that. Oh no, these are wrong because we are doing index zero. Let's fix that. So we need to minus one and minus one. I think that's okay. So position four is here and position five is there. So I think this looks right. Um, so we've got an array that contains L and L. And now what we want to do is um, just bring up the help. Um, so indices is the method we want or the operation, um, indices outputs an array that contains this value. So if I, so this is the example I'm looking at. So if I do indices one, it will give me the index of each one of these. And if uh, if my array, let's get rid of that, is LL and I do indices of L, the length should be one. And anything other than one is invalid. So indices of dollar underscore dot rule dot letter and we should be able to just do length equals one and we have a number 509 bosh there we go so jq done what's nice we're able to reuse a lot of the code that we had before so yeah JQ, not so tricky for me at least, because I know the um, <laughs> I know the some of the problems that need to be solved. 
Uh, I need to align that for my own OCD. There you go. Um, I did have a go. I've been trying to do assembly for yesterday's, and it's just a mess. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. I use JavaScript to turn the list of files into binary output. That was fun, um, and that worked. Um, but actually getting this to work, oh my. Um, yeah, I'm not. It's a language I struggle with still, assembly. I can just about read it. Um, but trying to kind of work out how to do loops and let alone parsing, oh God, I don't know. So yeah, uh, I will at some point see if I can get even just day one working in assembly. But for now, that was um, JQ. And uh, the tool that I was using was JQ Term, uh, which is a little tool that I made. Um, they are like secret gists uh, on the back end. And uh, it means that you have a permalink to uh, this result. So thanks for watching.